Guys, I'm scared. There's a lot of news that I have to cover this week, but you know what? This is the Geek End update, and I'm obligated to get it out by Sunday, so I gotta get to work. This week we have news from all corners of geek culture, and if you're interested you can skip ahead to any of these time codes, that being DC, Disney, Doctor Who, Marvel, Star Trek, Star Wars, Uncharted, whatever you want, skip to it if you're interested. If not, are you ready to go on a journey with me? Because there's a lot of news this week that we gotta cover. Are you ready? As always, if you like this content, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested, please be sure to share it on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you like to share things to. Some unrelated subreddit that you may or may not get flack for. Who knows? They may enjoy it. As always, all the news items will be linked in the description down below, or you can visit geekcritique.net for a much larger explanation of each of the items. It's been previously reported that J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot have been working with Warner Brothers to develop DC projects. Now Deadline is reporting that Bad Robot, along with their media deal with Warner Brothers, is developing several ideas for pitches towards a Justice League Dark Universe. Uh, what that means, we don't fully know yet, but apparently there will be ideas for TV shows and films pitched, whether uh, certain characters will make the cut or certain characters will uh, be pushed as leads in this universe, we don't know yet, but they seem set on the Justice League Dark IP. We've got a lot of Disney news to cover, but one of the more interesting items was the reveal of 12 unique posters for the Lunar New Year uh, of films that are coming out in this next year. That includes Disney films, that includes Pixar films, that includes Marvel films, and more interestingly, I think, it includes Fox films. The films with unique posters in the order of release are Onward, Mulan, The New Mutants, Black Widow, Soul, Free Guy, Jungle Cruise, The King's Man, Death on the Nile, Eternals, Raya and the Last Dragon, and West Side Story. Now while all of these are beautiful pieces, I find it really interesting that in the Eternals one, we actually get a look at their costumes, and this is presumably a finished look of what the costumes, even in a stylized form, will look like. So I think that's a really cool catch. Another interesting tidbit is that some of the films aren't even slated to release in China, so that's interesting. A live-action Bambi remake is in the works. THR is reporting that Geneva Robertson Duarte and Lindsay Beer are penning the script, and that Depth of Field, the production company, is going to be producing the film. Interestingly, that's the same production company that's in charge of the Pinocchio film. Now, I have not seen Bambi since I was a kid, and uh, that's because it was uh, very sad, and I'm already thinking about that one scene, and... I can't do this. Supposedly the Bambi film will be live action in the sense that Jungle Book and Lion King were also live action, so it'll be a companion piece to those films. So I think that'll be interesting. Do we need it? No. Along with the Bambi remake news, Deadline is reporting that Oscar-winning filmmaker Robert Zemeckis is on board to helm the Pinocchio film. Zemeckis is set to direct the film and co-write the next draft of the script with writer Chris Waits, and production may begin as soon as uh, end of 2020. The casting for the film is ongoing. It appears we have some character information on the upcoming Peter Pan and Wendy film that we discussed a couple weeks ago. Diz Insider is claiming that Tiger Lily, one of the original characters from the 1953 animated film, will have a much larger appearance in the upcoming movie. There's currently a casting call going out for an 18 to 25 year old Native American or First Nations actress. Diz Insider says, Tiger Lily is indigenous to Neverland with a bow at her back. She is both a fierce warrior and a serene and benevolent leader who protects Neverland and the lost boys and girls from the dastardly Captain Hook. This character will speak in both English and a native language. We've got some Doctor Who news this week, especially in regards to Series 13, which presumably will be next fall. We don't know at this point. Hopefully there won't be any more gap years for a long while. We previously discussed the rumor that uh, Chris Chibnall and potentially Jodie Whittaker were leaving the show after the 12th series. Whether that's a sacking or not, we didn't know at the time, and it was it is still a rumor. It, it hasn't been confirmed or denied. While at this stage I do not believe that previous rumor that we reported on as being accurate, it is notable that the BBC never denied it, which I thought was very, very strange. But anyway, according to a quote from Entertainment Weekly where Jodie Whittaker directly spoke to them, she said this, Yes, I'm doing another season, she confirms. That might be a massive exclusive that I'm not supposed to say, but it's unhelpful for me to say, I don't know, because it would be a massive lie. She laughs, I absolutely adore it. At some point, these shoes are going to be handed on, but it's not yet. So that's great news. I, I think that she's really developing into her character. I think in Spyfall, she really uh, 
became the doctor for me. I don't know. Uh, she she was fine in her first season, but it looks like she's actually doing much better in her second season, um, and she's starting to really feel like uh, she's matured into her role. So I'm hoping for another season, and we'll see where it goes after series 13. Now, while we don't usually post set photos on our Geek End update, I think these are pretty notable set photos because they do paint a picture. We have Wyatt Russell, the actor playing US agent, supposedly. These pictures are from page six. Notice that in these set photos, he's carrying the shield that Cap gave to Falcon at the end of Avengers Endgame. I think this is very notable. I think it's proof that uh, for whatever reason, the government takes the shield away from Sam and gives it to this guy, John Walker. The character was first introduced in 1986 as Captain America 323 as Super Patriot, and eventually he took the mantle of Captain America before becoming US agent. Sometimes he's uh, pictured as a villain, sometimes he's pictured as a hero. We don't know exactly where this rendition of the character lies in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but it looks like he's going to be an antagonist because we already have uh, something that goes against the previous Cap's wishes in the fact that he's using the shield that was given to someone else. So I'm guessing that's going to be a huge plot point, and I think he will be an antagonist in the series. THR is reporting that the writer-director duo of Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck are not returning to Captain Marvel 2, but they did gain a new writer. Megan McDonnell, who previously did work as a staff writer for WandaVision, is currently being tapped to uh, potentially write the script for Captain Marvel 2, which is set in present day. Now, presumably this is going to be a 2022 film, so will this be a present day uh, 2022, which means it would take place between Infinity War or End Endgame, or is this going to be post Endgame, which means it would have to be after, uh, I'd say, October 2023. What do you guys think about that? Take this with a grain of salt, but apparently Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, the writer-director duo of the first film, are now working on a Disney Plus series that hasn't been announced yet. So there's a lot of news on Hulu's Marvel animated series this week. Variety is reporting that the animated series Howard the Duck and Tiger and Dazzler have been cancelled. And this does follow the news that a couple months ago, Erica Rivenoha, the showrunner for Tiger and Dazzler, left the project as well as some of the staff writers on that series due to creative differences with Marvel. Now, the cancelling of these two series does impact the team-up that was planned for Hulu uh, that would also include MODOK and Hitmonkey, that series being called The Offenders. But interestingly enough, MODOK and Hitmonkey are still moving forward, though the other two are cancelled. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be a team-up of The Offenders one way or the other. Patton Oswalt will be playing MODOK, the mental organism designed only for killing. Now this news coincides with the press release which also claims that the new TV division for Marvel will be called Marvel TV Studios. The site Bleeding Cool is reporting that two unannounced Marvel television shows are in active development currently, uh, presumably for Disney+, Plus. one of those being a series for Secret Invasion. Now this would be huge because we kind of all assumed that that would be uh, one of the next big arcs in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now the fact that this rumor is claiming that Disney is planning to push their Secret Invasion story onto Disney Plus means one of two things. That they want their Disney Plus prog programming to be as big as the Avenger level films, or that it's not going to be as big of a uh, thing moving forward as we pre previously thought it might be. But the fact that the scrolls were introduced into Captain Marvel and then again in Far From Home kind of shows that they're going into that direction. The other unannounced series that Bleeding Cool is talking about doesn't have an official name, but it'll be more character-based according to them. Vision Comics writer Tom King has uh, teased the potential for Sparky the Android Dog to feature in WandaVision, which is something that I think everyone would be happy about. This is also something that Kevin Feige teased a little while back, so I think there's a little bit of weight to it. We have some Loki hearsay uh, and conjecturing that's taking place uh, that there may be a second season according to Murphy's Multiverse. Now the biggest line of reasoning here is that some of the people being cast for the production of the film have written in their contracts the potentiality for a second season. So. Will there be a second season of Loki? Do you want to see a se second season of Loki? I guess that would depend on how good the first season is, but I mean, I would take it. Now take this next bit with a huge grain of salt, but according to the Illuminati, uh, several casting calls have gone out for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, one of them being for a young Hispanic actress, and the other being for a Caribbean slash Haitian person to join the cast uh, in some unknown capacity. They're conjecturing that this could be 
America Chavez or Brother Voodoo, but we really don't know at this point. It seems that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has so many people attached to it, so so many cameos that it needs to uh, like fit into it. I can totally understand why <laughs> Scott Derrickson has left the project. Uh, if you want to check out our video on that, you can click this card right here. You know what? I'm going to come up with a rumor uh, for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Hold on. It's coming to me. It's coming. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness will feature a cameo of Nick Cage's Ghost Rider. You heard it here first. He'll have a 10 second cameo in the film. This is legit. We had a lovely bit of Star Trek news this past week. Of course, the first episode for the new series Picard is out and fans mostly are loving it. You can check out our review of the first episode right here. But what I love about this bit of news is that Patrick Stewart actually went on to The View, the talk show with Whoopi Goldberg, and uh, he asked her in person uh, in an unscripted but uh, official capacity whether or not she would like to reprise her role as Guinan from The Next Generation on the second season of Picard. Hard. Alex Kurtzman, who is the senior executive producer of Star Trek Picard, oh. and all of his oh. colleagues, of which I am one, want to invite you into the second season. Oh. It really is just like a beautiful little exchange. She's clearly verklempt, she's caught off guard, and of course she says yes. <laughs> For the Star Wars news this week, we have a few items. Obviously, you probably know that the Kenobi series has been delayed. We discussed it in depth in this video here. If you have not checked that out, I highly recommend it because we go to all the original sources and what exactly is being said by those sources as far as what they're hearing about the Kenobi series. I think it's an interesting news item and I thought it was worthy of its own video instead of posting it here on the Geek End Update. But here we are. Since last week's Duel of the Fate script leaked, there have been about 20 photos that leaked online from the Colin Trevorrow uh, Duel of the Fate script, and some of them are pretty interesting. We have Rey with a double-bladed lightsaber, we have a light blade guillotine, we have Rey training with Luke, we have a picture of Tor Valum, the supposed Sith teacher that taught Sidious much of his dark side powers. We have Kylo fighting Vader in a cave sequence, which would have been so cool. But an interesting one for me was that R2 had a huge blaster shot in his uh, dome, and C-3PO appears to be mourning over his lost friend. Colin Trevorrow went to Twitter to confirm that these are indeed concept art images from his unreleased film, and that no, he did not kill R2. So, thank you, Colin. I, I would have been angry. Jordan Mason of Cinelinks is reporting that a Knights of the Old Republic remake or sequel is potentially in the works. Now, he originally covered this story back in 2015, but in around 2016, the, the project was scrapped for whatever reason. It appears to be back on. So this is very exciting, especially because a lot of the new canon stuff that was introduced in the Rise of Skywalker, especially in the Visual Dictionary, coincides with the fact that uh, a lot of the stuff from the Knights of the Old Republic series is now canon, including uh, Darth Revan. Would you guys like to see a remake of Knights of the Old Republic? I mean, it is one of the best Star Wars games that we've ever had, and it's one of the most beloved parts of the franchise that we've ever seen. I think it would be a great idea to do that. Uh, whether or not that will tie in with Project Luminous, we don't know, but apparently uh, Project Luminous, there is a game attached to it, uh, and it will uh, reportedly take place around 300-400 years before the Skywalker Saga, so maybe that's what the High Republic period is, and I think that will probably be separated from the Old Republic uh, game that we will potentially be getting. Hopefully we get more details on that soon. So we have a little bit of Uncharted news today. It's a little bit sad, but um, apparently the film that's supposed to be featuring Tom Holland as Nathan Drake and Mark Wahlberg as Victor Sully has been pushed from December 18th, 2020 to March 5th, 2021. Will it actually happen? Who knows? They're on track to hire Ruben Fleischer, Fleischer uh, to direct. Uh, he'll be the seventh director attached to the film because every other director has left. And that date, March 5th, was the original date for uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe film that was canceled a little while back. So that date opened up. They decided to give the Uncharted film a little more gestation, a little more time to, you know, be written and made. And it uh, looks like it's potentially coming out on March 5th. Are you interested in an Uncharted movie? Because um, I think I just want more games, personally. But I would like to see what they would do in a live action film. Uh, so let me hear your thoughts. And let me hear your thoughts on anything that we discussed in this video.
Guys, how do we do on our Geek End update this week? Uh, next week will be delayed a little bit. We will be traveling uh, during the Super Bowl, so we'll actually miss the Super Bowl, which is the first time I think that's ever happened. And uh, yeah, so we'll, you'll probably get the next Geek End update a few days later, so it won't be a Geek End update. It'll be a Geek Day update. If you liked this video, please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Please share it if you're interested in helping us out. And guys, uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Please share them down below. Uh, we'll respond to each and every one of them. Thanks. Have a good one.